Hey Kat with you here to talk a bit more about events. We've already had a look at events in Implementing Action Listener and that allowed us to use form components to trigger events such as button presses or pressing enter on the text field. Now we're going to look at events that are triggered by the mouse. So you might be thinking, well, what can a mouse do? Well, a mouse can be pressed, it can be released, it can be clicked, It can, it can enter an applet and it can exit an applet. So these are all in the form of past tense, pressed, released, clicked, entered, exited. Now these are actually method names associated with the mouse listener. So remembering the action performed, we had to implement the action listener and then we had to have action performed down the bottom. So action performed was the method associated with the action listener. So with the mouse listener we have these methods. They are mouse pressed, mouse released, mouse clicked, mouse entered, so I'm just going to put M's there, and so mouse pressed, mouse released, mouse clicked, mouse entered and mouse exited. And they all take a type which is a mouse event and we're going to call it E. Okay, so these are all methods associated with the use of a mouse. Just to be a little bit more specific on that, these are used with the mouse listener. The reason that I'm specific with that is because there's also a mouse motion listener. So where the mouse listener listens to the pressed and the clicked and where it is, whether it's in the applet space or outside of the applet space, the mouse motion listener looks for other things as to the actual movement. So is the mouse being dragged or is the mouse being moved? So it detects the movement rather than the action. And these also take, I'll just pop it in one of them, these also take a mouse event. E. Okay, let's have a quick squeeze on Eclipse as to how we would use both of these different listeners. Okay, looking at Eclipse, I've got, I've just created a new Java project called Events and in there I've created a new class called Mouse Events. Okay, so let's get up, set up to deal with the mouse listener. First of all, it's an event, so we need to import the events package. So java.awt.event.star. And in our class line, we've got public class mouse events extends applet. And in this case, it implements mouse listener. Okay, we're going to get an error there. It's telling us that we haven't put in the methods mouse clicked, pressed, release, exited, and so on. So we need to pop those methods in as well. So just quickly pop them in. So it's public void mouse pressed. Now it doesn't matter which order you put these in because they will only happen when that event happens. So the order in which they're written in the code doesn't actually matter. So I'm going to copy the mouse pressed one I've written and I'm going to paste it in. Uh, I'm going to paste it in five times. So we've got pressed, I'm going to put in released, um, clicked, entered and exited. That should have got rid of that error at the top there. Okay, one of the other things that I need to do is remember in normal events with the components, whatever component we wanted to be able to respond to events, we had to add an action listener to it. Well, in this case, we don't add a mouse listener to a component, we add a mouse listener to the program. 
So we just say add mouse this now, this and a semicolon. Okay, so just to have a little play with um, with the mouse events and seeing how they're going to work, we're going to put a little bit of information in some of the methods. And to know what's sort of happening, we might want to get the x and the y coordinate of where the mouse is. So I'm going to declare int x and y. And let's say, for example, I want to actually say, I want to provide some feedback. In my paint, I'm going to put in a drawstring and just say, mouse is at and then plus the x variable then I'm going to have a comma and a space and plus the y variable and I'm going to draw that at the place where the mouse is at x and y. Okay so that's all well and good but I haven't actually given x and y values yet so I might just do this in pressed and say x equals, and here is where I use my mouse event, my e, and I say I want to get the x of where that mouse event happened. And I'm going to do the same with the y. So get x and get y are methods associated with a mouse event. So when that mouse event is triggered, it can set x and y to the value of where the mouse was when it was pressed. Now if I want my paint method to be updated with the coordinates, I need to repaint the screen. Okay, so at the moment I don't have anything in any of my other methods. Let's just have a real quick look at that one. Okay, so pressed, pressed, pressed. I can move around and it will tell me the coordinates of where I'm currently at. Okay, let's have a little bit of a look at some of the other bits and pieces. What if we wanted this to tell us what was happening or what had triggered the event at those coordinates? Let's just put in a string and we'll call it event. So when the mouse was pressed, the event is pressed. So we could say mouse is, let's end those quotes and then we'll add on, uh, we'll add on whatever the event was. Mouse is something at whatever the coordinates are. Hopefully that makes some sense. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it into released and into clicked and obviously I'm going to change the words. So I'm going to change the event to be released in mouse released and clicked in mouse clicked. So I've only got content in pressed, released and clicked. So wherever I click release or press in my applet, it should tell me where that happened and what it was that happened. Okay, so pressed, released, clicked. Yeah, so it stays, it's clicked if it presses and release it releases in the exact same position. If you press and release somewhere else, it's a press and a release. Okay, having fun playing here. Um, let's have a look at um, entered and exited. What we could do in there is we could do something which is called show status and we could say mouse entered applet area and let's just copy that and say mouse exited applet area. Now let's just run this again and see if you can figure out where that information is going. Okay, so this bit down here 
is the status. So we can provide a status down there using the command show status. Okay, that's where the, those bits were. So you could use this to draw things. So let's say, for example, we use g dot fill oval, and we could fill the oval at x comma y, and let's make it a fairly decent size. Okay. So we're just using those x and y coordinates, but we're using them to draw. Yay, we can put dots on the screen. What if we wanted to put multiple dots on the screen? What we can do is rather than using paint, we use something that's called update. So we add an extra method in here, well, you know, wherever, and we call it public void update. It takes graphics G, and we have it paints G. So now what happens is when we call repaint, it basically updates the screen by adding drawings to the screen rather than wiping it and adding a clean slate. Okay, so if you want to draw things and then have them disappear every time the screen, something new happens on the screen, you need to simply use repaint. If you want to have it add to the screen so you get a heap of things on there or can draw continuous lines or whatever, then you would use update. Okay, just really quickly, let's also use the mouse motion listener. And to do that, we would, if we want to implement more than one type of listener, we separate them with a comma. So we'll implement mouse motion listener. And this one has two methods associated with it. So I'm going to keep all my mouse methods together. There is no rule that says you have to do that. But anyway, so we've got mouse moved with a mouse event E. Remember that E is a name that I've given that object. You don't have to use E. I'm going to copy the X and Y stuff from before just to quickly test out this feedback thing. Um, so we've also got mouse dragged, public void mouse dragged. Paste that in there and we'll change it to present tense. Moving, dragging. Let's comment back out that oval and keep our drawstring in there. So it should tell us what we're doing. So let's just run it, make the applet bigger. So we've got pressed, released, ah, oh, we've still got update in there. I'll just, if I want to comment out more than one line at a time, I use a slash star to start and a star slash to finish. Okay, so just for the purpose of this exercise, quickly, I am just using repaint. Pressed, clicked. Okay, my dragging's not working, possibly because, oh, I know why. Let's comment that back out. So every time I tell you, remember that you need to add the listener you need to actually remember to add the listener. So it wasn't responding to moved or dragged because I didn't put the mouse motion listener in. Okay, so I need to tell it it can listen for motion, uh, otherwise it won't. Mouse is moving at whatever coordinates. Press the mouse button and it is dragging at those coordinates. Okay, now for the fun of it, let's put update back in. So you just delete out those comments. I'm going to comment my drawstring back out and put my fill oval back in and I'm going to make my oval a bit smaller. 
Let's see if I can draw some pretty patterns on the screen. Woo! So if I go fast, I get spread out dots. If I go slow, they're really close to each other. Okay, so this could be adapted in many different ways to enable someone to draw on the screen. Perhaps a more useful uh, way to use the mouse listener is to create clickable regions on the screen to trigger some responses. So if you had a little game, maybe you would earn a point if you clicked on the door of the house or something to that effect. So this has just been a little exercise in learning what a mouse event or what a mouse listener and a mouse motion listener what they are. A little bit about how they can be used, but this is not necessarily a practical application of those two listeners. So have a little bit of a play and come up with your own ways of using these listeners and, you know, do some fun stuff along the way. Enjoy your mouse events.